Bonaire, 1984. A ship called the Helma Hooker lost power and was towed to Bonaire's main pier. A search of the vessel uncovered 25,000 pounds of marijuana hidden between a real and false bulkhead. The drugs were removed and burned and it is rumored that the locals were high for days. Local dive operators appealed to the government to have her sunk as a dive site but the legal process left her tied to the pier. Meanwhile, the poorly kept unmanned ship was leaking. The San Andreas shipping line out of Columbia would not come forward to answer questions, pay for maintenance, towing charges, repair, or dock time. Its owner was not interested in possible jail time. A decision was made to move the hooker to an anchorage in fear that the ship would sink at the pier. The hooker was moved to an anchorage on September 7th. With the owner not showing up to fix the leaks, she began taking on water and on September 14th she began taking water through her portholes. At 9.08 a.m. she rolled over on her starboard side and in the next two minutes disappeared. The hooker became one of the most dove wrecks in the Caribbean. The hooker is about 71.8 meters long, 11 meters wide, she weighed 1,027 tons, before being called the Hilma Hooker, she was called the Doric Express, and before that, the Minstrel, and before that, Midlands. We arrive at the Hilma Hooker dive site. The Hilma Hooker rests between the lake and Angel City dive sites. Hey guys, this is Rich. I'm at the Hilma Hooker dive site in Bonaire. This particular dive site, although extremely popular, is mostly dove during the day. The most beautiful time to see this wreck is really at night, and that's when the colors come out. Also, you typically find that the marine life on the, on the wreck are actually more chill at night for whatever reason. We're going to film the wreck at night, and we're also going to show you where the anchor is, where the chain actually leads you out to the reef, loops around, to actually come back to the anchor, how you can find those particular items. But as far as the wreck goes, we're also going to take you into the engine room. Very few people have actually seen the engine room on the Helma Hooker. We're going to take you there. We're also going to have some interesting visits by tarpon. Tarpon like to buzz people at night because of their lights. They actually follow the people's lights to go attack the fish. Now, if you can imagine what they're like when you have uh, camera lights which are even brighter. So that's quite of an experience. We'll get to see that. What you have on this site is you have three moorings. You have one tied to the south end of the site. This is on the bow. The northernmost one is tied to the stern and the center one is actually not on the wreck itself. It's actually tied just at the top of the reef amidship. So whatever you feel most comfortable with, go there uh, and drop down in and go see uh, see the wreck. How do you go do that? Well, just set a compass heading from shore where you're going to leave out to that mooring. Stick to it and then just reverse your compass setting and come back. I like to start at the bow. The Hilma Hooker wreck lies in 100 feet of water on our starboard side south of the lake dive site at the base of the first reef. You don't have to go that deep if you are uncomfortable. If you've not seen a wreck of this size, it certainly appears massive. From this perspective, you're only seeing halfway down the wreck. If you follow the anchor chain from the bow, it will take you to the second reef. About a one minute swim. The chain continues over the second reef and forms a loop. Here is the cross point. If you follow the loop around, you come back to the cross point. If you go right here, you will reach the hooker's anchor. We'll see that at night. Straight takes you back to the part of the chain that led you to the second reef. If you follow the anchor in the direction it is pointing, it will take you back to the hooker bow. Okay, do I dare say it? Let's go down on the hooker. Let's go dive. This is the story of two divers who left the corporate world and moved to Bonaire to live a diver's life by the sea. 
many only dream about this life. Our hope is to inspire you through our experiences and stories so that you can live the dream too. This is A Diver's Life. The water and sky, reflection in my eye, and it's true, so true. Is she shy? Is she shy? Is she shy? Is she shy? Tarpon packs are on the hunt. Descending into the void, the sandy bottom comes into view. The bow of the huge wreck materializes out of the darkness. The Helma Hooker. Colors lost in the daylight appear as a worm swims to the bow. Magic replaces fear as you enter a museum rich in color. Small worms and fish dance in the light just above the long forgotten front hatch. The base of the front mast is awash in a scattered poor rope sponge. Tube sponges, coral, and Sergeant Major eggs adorn the mast. We reach the top of the mast. Doreen hovers effortlessly above the mast. The forward crane boom lies silently against the mast. A blue tang and sergeant major are tucked in near the old mast ladder. A small hatch adjacent to the forward cargo hold. Although smaller than the aft cargo hold, the forward cargo hold is massive. Small fish dance in the camera lights. Small sponges and whip coral line the base of the forward hold. Time to exit the cargo hold. A great barracuda turns to give us a look and moves off. We enter the wheelhouse. The helm stands silent and its wheel has long since been removed rusted away by the sea. Electrical cables line the roof or hang suspended from the ceiling. The cargo hold covers lay stacked. A new home to small fish. A 
A large poured rope sponge and Sergeant Major eggs cover the port side of the wheelhouse. The aft crane boom extends over the length of the aft cargo hold. The crane winch lies next to the cargo hold, covered in violet sponges and coral and yellow tube sponges. The aft deckhouse. The funnel stands silent just below the northern port side davit. The davit appears out of the darkness. At its base, we can barely see a slipper lobster. How did it get here? Doreen hovers over the second port davit. Only coral and sponges. On another visit, we found this lazy green moray. How lazy? This sponge forms a heart at the end of the davit, just above the smokestack. Time to penetrate the hooker's engine room, which lies next to her smokestack. I don't know what it's about a sunken ship's engine room. To see it is both amazing and haunting at the same time. Red and blue rags hang from the engine, and a ceremonial heart rests on the catwalk. The Worksport diesel engine comes into view. The engine was a 1240 brake horsepower or 940 kilowatt six cylinder engine with only one shaft. Worksport is a Dutch machine company out of Amsterdam. Rust and crust the aging machinery. Catwalks and pipes are still in place which once hung above the engine. Below the large exhaust pipe extends to the smokestack. Surprisingly, there are not a lot of dangling cables, but if your buoyancy is not good, you could quickly run into problems. We proceed slowly to the exit. To our right is the smokestack. Unlike the daytime, our lights reveal the hidden art. We head to the second reef to find the ship's anchor and pass the forward mast again.
I need to bring my macro lens here. The anchor chain from the bow appears out of the sand to extend over the second reef. A four-eyed butterfly fish, a beautiful blue spotted coronet fish appears out of the darkness. It suddenly stops and I glide over it. I find him hiding behind my right eye. Just beautiful. A tarpon swims by the Hilma Hooker anchor. Back to the wreck. The aft deck house, and yes, a second helm. A new discovery for us. A linefish tucked in the deck house. We approach the stern. A ladder leads down. Thousands of small fish and worms create a fireworks display. The stern. The words Hilma Hooker, San Andres are revealed under our lights. Her massive rudder and prop. The stoplight parrotfish on the wall next to the hooker. Wire coral. Going up on the bow, we head in. A trumpet fish and coral shine brilliantly in our lights. Doreen tucks one last lionfish in and then this fish stays close to us. Tarpon are on the hunt. The tarpon get bolder and then they strike. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit the subscribe button and the bell. It goes a long way to supporting this channel and helps you to know when new content is released. Thank you for watching.